الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The surah in this session is going to be surah al-qari'ah <coughs> Surah al-qari'ah is a Meccan surah and in the majority of the books of tafsir the name of the surah is al-qari'ah It was revealed after Quraysh and before Surah Al-Qiyamah and there is no uh, particular reason mentioned in the books of Tafsir for the revelation of uh, the Surah. <coughs> Al-Qari'ah is, which is the name of the Surah is uh, also one of the names of the Day of Judgment just like at Al-Sakha, Al-Haqqa, Al-Ghashiya, other names mentioned in the Qur'an. This is uh, also another name for the, the Surah. Al-Qari'a is extracted from, uh, literally in, in the, uh, linguistically that is, is extracted from the word Qar'a. And Qar'a is striking something against another thing. Uh, very hard and producing a very, very, very loud uh, noise. Now, it is for certain that Allah Azza wa Jal did not want to convey this literal meaning to us, right? But uh, in view of this literal meaning of the word, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal is, uh, is paving the way uh, for us to expect something that is horrifying okay starting with this is paving the way to receive something serious to receive news about something that is important Allah Azza wa Jal uh, says Al-Qari'ah Mal Qari'ah Wa ma adaraka mal Qari'ah now Allah starts with Al-Qari'ah, the striking thing, or that which strikes. This is so mysterious, and thus is scary. When you're talking about the hereafter, and you don't know what this is about, what's striking what? Who's going to be struck with what? Who's going to be striking who? Unclear? Unknown answers? Makes a person curious to know what has been talking, talk, talked about here. What has been spoken about here. So Allah Azza wa Jal, after Al-Qari'ah, a single word that is very mysterious, follows that with Mal Qari'ah. Well, this is a natural reaction of the person who heard the first one. What is Al-Qari'ah? So Allah Azza wa Jal did not respond, did not answer and gave a question, did not clarify. Al-Qari'ah, no clarification. Instead of clarification, Allah, to further make you curious and to deepen that effect of fear as a result of this striking thing, he gives you a question. And again, instead of answering this question, he gives you even a more mysterious question as an answer to the second verse. And what can make you know what this Al-Qari'ah is. Meaning it is beyond your perception. It is something that you cannot realize with your human brain. It is something far more dreadful, more horrifying, more scary than what you can perceive, than you, what you can imagine. Now, we can't perceive it, we can't realize it, we can't know it for two things. 
One is because it is a matter of the ghayb, of the unseen. So certainly we're not going to know until Allah Azza wa Jal tells us. Second is because there is nothing, when, you tr when you're trying to perceive something, when you're trying to understand or acknowledge something, you will have to have a benchmark to compare things together so you can perceive. Because if you don't have data in your mind, then you can't compare anything. So since we don't have any information and Allah has not yet spoken about these details, so we cannot perceive. Allah Azza wa Jal in different parts of the Quran spoke about this, the scene of the, or the scary scene of the hereafter. And he spoke about the uh, blowing and the fear of people uh, on the day of resurrection. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَكُلٌّ أَتَوْهُ دَاخِرِينَ And warn, uh, and warn of, meaning O Muhammad, warn of the day the horn will be blown. Just talking about this is scary. And whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth will be terrified except whom Allah wills and all, all, will come to him humbled. Kings, T-boys, brigadiers and armies, it doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what tribe you come from or belong to. You on that day and me and everybody else will be humbled. Why? Why? Because we will be standing before the Almighty Allah, the exalted in, ma in might and power, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah Azza wa starts giving descriptions. يَوْمَ يَكُونُ النَّاسُ كَالْفَرَاشِ الْمَبْثُوثِ The day when people will be like moths dispersed. Allah starts with the description of what will take place. Sheikh Al Uthaymeen uh, said, commenting on this verse, he said, This verse reflects the deep impact of Al Qari'ah on people's behavior. And Allah gave a similitude to moths. Moths are attracted to fire. Right? And they usually go towards it to the extent that they can fall into it without realizing that, killing themselves. So Allah Azza wa Jal is giving them a similitude saying that people as a result of that qari'ah on that day, will be behaving like moths. Going, not knowing where they're going. They're too astonished, too horrified, deeply affected at what they're seeing around them. To the extent that people would not care, as in the narration of Aisha, when the Prophet ﷺ said that people will be resurrected naked. She said, what about people looking at each other's private parts? He said, the matter is going to be much severer for them to think about this issue. وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ And the mountains will be like wool, carded, fluffed up. 
descriptions are just, they split your heart out of fear. I'm sure everyone has seen a mountain. And I am also sure that you know that what you see from the mountain is nothing compared to its root. Allah Azza wa Jal created them to make the earth stable. So their roots under what you can see is farther and huger. Allah Azza wa Jal on that day is describing this humongous creation, magnificent creation, mountains, to be like fluffed up wool. So that strike is going to change a lot of things. It's going to have an impact on a lot of things. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْجِبَالِ فَقُلْ يَنْسِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَا فَيَدَرُهَا قَاعًا صَفْصَفَا And they ask you about the mountains. Say, O Muhammad, my Lord will blow them away with a blast, leaving the earth a level plain. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَبُسَّتِ الْجِبَالُ بَسَّا all about mountains. For you to compare how your heart is going to feel. If this is going to happen to mountains, what's going to happen to my heart and yours? وَبُسَّتِ الْجِبَالُ بَسَّا And mountains were demolished. Further, Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَكَانَتْ هَبَاءً مُنْبَثَّا Became like dust particles blown. These huge, humongous mountains will eventually at the end become flying dust particles. What's going to be the situation of mankind? And then Allah Azza wa Jal directly goes to another scene, the scene of accountability, the scale. فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ Then as for one whose scales are heavy, meaning the good deeds overweigh the bad deeds. Allah Musta'an. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ He will be in a pleasant and blissful life. No... Depression, no anxiety, no suicidal thoughts, no nagging of a husband or a wife or a child. Nothing. Nothing to change the atmosphere of joy and bliss and peace in any sort or form. Radia. <sighs> Uh, if I want to bring the picture clear, closer to the mind, uh, think of the best moment you've ever experienced in life. The best time where you felt your heart close to Allah. Life is beautiful. Every, everyone around you is loving and caring. You felt at your peak of joy and peace of heart and mind and nearness to Allah. If you were to take that period and copy paste it for the rest of your life, how would you reckon your life would look like? Unimaginable, wouldn't it? Now, any joy that you enjoy in this life, put it all collectively together, it would form nothing compared to the bliss that we will see insha'Allah in Jannah. Add to that the factor that that's going to be eternal, forever, non-ending. Now Allah Azza wa goes to the second type of people. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ But as for one whose scales are light. Light in good deeds. So his bad deeds 
overweight. His refuge will be a deep, bottomless pit, referring to the pit of the fire of hell. Uh, Hawiya is also one of the names of the fire. Allah Azza wa is saying, those who do not rise enough to the level of having their good deeds, overweighing their bad deeds, or the disbelievers who don't have any good deeds to start with, their final abode, their final refuge is going to be hellfire. Another meaning for the word ummuhu in Arabic is the top of his head. So Allah Azza wa Jal, according to this meaning, is saying that he is going to be thrown into fire upside down, head down, to further disgrace that person. And you know, when you start torture from the bottom, much easier than starting the torture from the face and the head. More sensitive. And what can you make you know or realize what it is? Again, it's to further scare people. And this is used a lot. Just like it was used in the beginning. Right? Again, something scary. You don't know. You can't really think of the severity of this fire, the intensity of this fire, the pain of the punishment is indescribable. You cannot perceive because you haven't experienced anything the like of that. And then Allah answers, Naun Hamia. It is what can you make what can make you know what it is? It is a blazing fire, intensely hot. Now, to make us try to understand how hot this fire is, the Prophet ﷺ uh, told us, and this is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari. He said, the fire that you kindle, the son of Adam kindles in this world, or this worldly life, is nothing but a part out of 70 of the fire of the hereafter. Meaning the fire of the hereafter is 70 times more intense, more hot than this worldly life's fire. So the companion said, by Allah, the fire of this worldly life would have been enough. It would have been enough to, to torture anyone. But as Allah Azza wa Jal says, when he was talking about burning people in fire and whenever their flesh was burnt, Allah will replace it, make it go back to fresh new uh, skin. Why? He said, so that they would taste punishment. Fire. In the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, On the day of judgment, the fire of hell will be brought, dragged with 70,000 chains. On each chain, there will be 70,000 angels. If you do simple math, that's 4.9 billion angels. Dragging the fire. So you will, we will understand what is an angel. If you had almost five billion people dragging something, you would think, wow, this must be something out of, out of this world. An angel, the Prophet ﷺ said, I was given the permission to describe one of the angels who carry the throne. The distance between his earlobe 
and his the, the bottom part of his neck jointing, joining the, the shoulder is a traveling distance of 70 years. Just this distance is 70, a 70 year journey. Can you imagine the rest of the, uh, of the angel, how huge? Now multiply that by 4.9 billion and that will be filled. That will be filled. This surah is a warning. And we have the chance. We still have time. Ali radiallahu anhu <clears throat> was in the graveyard in Medina once with a group of people. And started admonishing the people around him. And then he turned to the graves. And he said, O oh people of the graves, your money was distributed among the ears. Your wives remarried. Your homes were inhibited by others. Other people came into them. Other husbands or people left and others took your houses. This is the news we have for you. What is the news you have for us? And then he turned around to the people around him and he said, had they had the chance to talk and were permitted by Allah to speak out, they would have said, Take provision, for the best of provision is taqwa. Being fearful of Allah. And then he started crying radiallahu anhu and said, Al-Qabru sunduq al-amal wa'inda al-mawti ya'teek al-khabar. The grave is the safe box in which uh, deeds are kept. And when death comes to you, you will uh, receive the true news. Meaning, you will discover your destiny. We st we're still alive. We still have a chance. We can work to be amongst من ثقلت موازين and escape being from those whose scale is light. Let's work on it. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت. استغفرك وأتوب إليك. We'll stop.